Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Lost in the Wasteland, my weekly interview show where I get to learn a little bit about somebody else's perspective on movies. And I have a fellow Philly area critic, Jeremy Kibler, joining me. So Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Shane. And before we get into this, would you like to shamelessly plug where people can find you and any of your work? So I write for uh, guyatthemovies.com, so you can find my reviews there. Um, I also will plug my reviews on Letterboxd. You can find me, I think it's J. Kibler Film. Um, also on Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it now. Uh, same. X J. each Kibler other. Film. Yeah, X. <laughs> so, yeah. So weird. Uh <laughs> I'm 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 gonna not harp on it, but I can't like I have a I have a master's in accounting, I have a business degree, and it just blows my mind that you take such an iconic like product where that literally invented a word, tweeting, <laughs> and you're just like, it's not mine, I don't like it. And you're just like, there goes all your branding. I just I can't. And also on your phone on the app, it looks like a like a porn app or something. <laughs> I, could, I remember when they finally switched it. I'm just like, um, if the getting rid of tweeting wasn't bad enough, then you get rid of like the most noticeable app symbol that you have on your phone, and then it's just a strange X. Uh, I know it's awful. But yeah, that is that is a good take. I didn't really think about it, but that does actually make sense. Um, but I always like to start off with a question that most people either hate or have a very specific answer for. But Jeremy, what's your favorite film? So whenever I'm asked that, I don't know, it it kind of depends on my mood or the day, but I always I always give them two. I say Jaws and Scream, the original Wes Craven scream um I think eight years ago today also Wes Craven passed away mm. so um but yeah um I guess I'll go with scream today <laughs> um just with like scream six you know coming out this year and everything um that movie was just definitely like a gateway for horror movies like I'm a mm. big horror fan and um you know I I loved it I loved Nev Campbell's Sydney Prescott. She was definitely like a final girl to remember. And um, yeah, I I feel like it also got me into like the movies that Scream referenced, like uh, Halloween, yep. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and all the sequels that sucked apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely, definitely Scream, I'd have to say. Yeah, I, um, I, for... Well, I'm still a big baby, so I don't love I don't like love going out and watching horror films. But like, if it's great, it's still a great film, and I could get a lot out of it. But I definitely did not watch horror films when I was younger. So like, I had never watched Scream. I honestly watched Scary Movie before I watched Scream. To yeah, be honest, yeah. and now it's just like watching scream and especially with like this the newest sequels that have been coming out mm. it's great scream is especially anybody who is watching movies in the 90s was like yeah this is this generation slasher uh franchise and it's still going which is yeah. crazy because so i work at a college and i'm talking i am that guy that always asks the same ice breaking question I asked students, what's your favorite movie? So, like, that's my icebreaker. And I had a couple of students, like, scream. And I'm, like, this week, and I'm, like, it's, like, what's your favorite scary movie? (laughs) And it's just, like, these are uh, 19-year-olds who weren't even alive in the 90s. That... I think I was... Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And it's just, like, scream has that impact. And I think these new films have done good in terms of getting younger people to actually go check out Scream, which is great because it deserves it. Right, for sure. And Wes Craven is definitely missed, like, a lot. Oh, yeah. Now, Jeremy, what's your earliest memory of going to the movies? Um, 
I mean, I think I think Beethoven <laughs> with the nice. St. Bernard. I think, that was the first, I think that was the first movie that I saw, but the first like memorable uh like theater experience I would say was seeing Batman Returns in or at a drive-in. It was with my family. Mm-hmm. I think my I think my immediate family was in one car and I was in another car next to it with my cousins. And I just remember like having to hold my bladder the whole time because I, I was just so much, I was so into it. <laughs> um, and then I guess that kind of started, I definitely had a Tim Burton phase until, I don't know, it kind of fell off for me. <laughs> I feel like the 2000s for the most part, it's just like yeah. things just weren't the same. Love Big Fish. Big Fish oh, is yeah. different. Oh, yeah. But then <laughs> not much since then has really hit the same way. Wasn't a big fan of Alice in Wonderland. I probably was one of the few that actually kind of liked Dark Shadows. I don't know. I just I think I think I loved it on like a surface level though. <laughs> just like the, the the set decoration and production. Yeah, it's it's surface level fun. Everything's yeah. quirky and weird and just going for it. Yeah. Um in the usual way that they do. Uh Ava Green though. She just and you put her in anything. You could have it's like random 300 sequel, the random best thing in Sin City sequel, mm-hmm. I guess random sequel to anything, and she's going <laughs> to go hard, so there you go. She's your girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, Batman Returns, like, I didn't, I, you know, comic book movie discourse is always a minefield to be going through at any given moment, but like, Especially, I remember, because every time a new Batman movie comes out, people are just, like, ranking. Um, (laughs) And it's like, when the Batman came out, I saw so many people shitting on Batman Returns, and I'm just like... Really? I'm like, I don't get this. Why does everybody hate this? It's creepy, it's gothic, I love it. Danny DeVito. It's a Christmas movie, kind of. (laughs) Yeah, honestly. (laughs) Christopher Walken is uh, Max Shrek. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> the most obnoxious pompadour. Oh, God. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer is will always be Catwoman. I mean, I I, I definitely liked um uh Anne Hathaway in The Dark Knight Rises, but Michelle Pfeiffer though. <laughs> She's yeah. It's like that's I I would like to see a Batman movie. Just be unabashedly letting their Catwoman be that sexy again. Hey, she just I got that web. <laughs> We're in that leather. <laughs> yeah. That she stitched together that looks like <laughs> some kind of like slasher put it together. It's just like, no. yeah, it's just like, uh, this isn't like clean cut. <laughs> this is like, she's a little unhinged. And, and, her, and her cats lick her hand, bite her hands, and she comes back to life i guess that's a really <laughs> creepy moment like when she like her eyes shoot open and right. just like it's like i love uh what colin farrell did which yeah. that's such an interesting choice to get colin farrell to play the penguin under, but like under, he delivered yes. under like probably like a hundred pounds of makeup <laughs> uh but danny devito is so evil <laughs> and creepy Bites a guy's and, nose. <laughs> Blood gushing. It just like actually looks like a penguin. Uh <laughs> so tiny. But now shifting gears into a couple other kinds of favorites. What's your favorite genre of film? Um, well, like I said, I have I have to I have to be honest, horror for sure. Like Um, now I, I'm aware that like, like, you know, not every horror movie is, you know, gold, but, um, it, uh, I love, I kind of love where horror is nowadays. Like it used to be this, um, like redheaded stepsister kind of, you know, genre, but, um, Mm -hmm. I think it's really come around with like, uh, streaming services like Shudder Mm -hmm. and, uh, a24 putting out a lot of like elevated horror (laughs) most art house weird shit you're gonna find (laughs) oh yeah 
Yeah, Her- uh, Hereditary, Midsommar, all those. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I have to go with my gut horror for sure. It's uh, shamelessly plugging an article that I just wrote on uh, GuideToMovies.com. It is such an interesting time for horror because you do have, you literally have a whole streaming service just dedicated to horror movies. And Shudder has such an interesting variety of films on there too like you're gonna find the most random and unbearably uncomfortable and unnerving like foreign horror movies on there that's just like boy do they go hard elsewhere like oh yeah i I just uh watch a screening link for their first ever malaysian horror movie and it's just like southeast asia just hits an uncomfortable level of terror (laughs) in a different way than american horror movies go and they always seem to be in the most disgusting and haunting apartment complexes. <laughs> like, I've seen multiple films on Shutter from, like, Malaysia or Indonesia. It's just like, I would never want to live in an apartment <laughs> anywhere near here. Really, really suspend disbelief. Like, who the hell would live here? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, like, A24 just letting artists do the most disturbing and uncomfortable art remember watching the witch for the first time and just being like boy is robert eggers a nerd but also this is demented and so uncomfortable to watch yeah he got got the language right but he also just oh my god knew how to get under your skin yeah and you have uh you have like blumhouse which is like the the uh like the pulpy horror of like the 80s like 90 mm-hmm. percent of their movies feel like they are influenced by 80s horror movies and quality hasn't been as consistent lately with them as i feel like it was a few years ago but still they're fun they're campy they're crazy and then you know you get stuff like megan which just becomes a cultural phenomenon and <laughs> that doll shows up at baseball games and just like, what's going on here? Or (laughs) smile where you have creepy people smiling at baseball games. It's just like new way to promote horror promote at baseball games, apparently on national (laughs) television. Never go to a baseball game ever. (laughs) No. Well, apparently don't watch it because they, I remember leading up to smile, just being like, why are there like, behind home plate and you're just like um i just imagine like families just watching baseball and little kids be like daddy what's going on here (laughs) it's just like it's okay it's just it's just guerrilla marketing for a horror movie don't worry about it (laughs) but jeremy who uh do you have a particular favorite filmmaker um Well, like I already said, like definitely Wes Craven, but uh, Mm -hmm. I went through a Hitchcock phase for sure. Like kind of when I worked my way through, um, you know, know, like the suspense, the thriller, the horror genres, subgenres, Brian De Palma. I mean, it's so hard to nail down one, but then I don't know. I'm I'm I guess I'm a man of contradictions, but then I also love Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Jaws, E.T., Jurassic Park, those are some of my favorites as well. Um, it's hard to just tell you one, but... Um, it's, it's hard to argue against Spielberg, seeing as he's arguably the greatest director of all time. Yeah. And, you know, Jaws was terrifying. Like, my grandma never went back into the ocean. Oh, wow. After Jaws came out. Yeah. But it's 1975. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I I think I always think of Jaws, like, even if I'm in a pool, like, it just, I don't know, it just comes to my mind. Like, I, I saw it at a young age, too. Um, Obviously not, like, 1975, but I remember watching on VHS or whatever at a neighbor's house, and just that, that mechanical shark, I know it gets a lot of um, crap, but I would take that mechanical shark, you know, Bruce the shark over, like, Sharknado level <laughs> uh guy uh-huh. any day. Meg. <laughs> yeah. I mean I I like the first Meg. The the second Meg can suck it, but 
the <laughs> second Meg forgot the assignment. Right. If, if I have to wait 90 minutes into this movie before Jason Statham starts punching sharks, okay. you miss the assignment. You didn't care about the double crossing and the the bad, the villain having like a love interest. And the, yeah, no, it was ugh. so disappointing. I'm like, I gave probably gave a whole star just for the moment where Jason Statham Spartan kicks a guy into the a Meg's mouth and then says, see you later, chum. And I'm just like, see, that's the movie. That was a good impression, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you. And it's just like, and then you didn't do it. <laughs> you gave me 20 minutes of this and it should have been 90. And like, why was this movie two hours? Well, uh, had to be, I mean, it was called the trench. I guess they had to have they had to be on the ocean floor for what felt like half of it. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't even fight a bunch of giant monsters while they were down there for the most part. <laughs> it's just like, nope, humans with some insert capitalist kind of conspiracy. It's just like, uh, of course. <laughs> and it's just yeah. like you couldn't even get creative. It's like low hanging fruit here, but anyway, the funny thing is, my wife would argue ET is a horror movie. Um, she is terrified of ET, like the creepy, actual... the... <laughs> uh, the Reese's pieces, <laughs> like the actual like that's a costume, right? Or is it? A... It's a real alien. <laughs> is it animatronic? Is like there's somebody in it. That's a, actually, you know what? I think this is the first time I ever thought about that. I mean, I think it was animatronic, but but yeah. So, well, that animatronic scares the living crap out of your <laughs> wife. <laughs> he had a little wrinkly. Is it a little weird? But yeah, yeah, I don't think it was meant oh, to be a horror movie. So, <laughs> just for some people. Right. Now, thinking about in front of the camera, who are some of your favorite actors? Um. Julianne Moore for sure. Um, I love Vera Farmiga. Um, Me too. Um, not only in the Conjuring movies, but oh. um, Bates Motel. I loved that show. I loved her um, as mother. <laughs> um, she's I don't know. She's done so much. She 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 always shows up, and I feel like she just always brings her A game. Um, I love Jennifer Connelly. I'm, doing I'm so that. glad she popped up in Top Gun Maverick. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was great, a great love interest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and really. she was in Only the Brave, that like fire jumper film with like Josh oh. Rolin and Miles Teller and stuff like that. I think that came out in 2017. Yeah, I missed that one. But I, I enjoyed okay. that movie a lot more than I expected to. Yeah. That's a great cast. You didn't even have Jeff Bridges pop up for like 15 minutes in it, too. <laughs> um but oh i'm a huge fan of vera formiga she she tears my heart out and up in the air because yeah. i'm like i was so committed and drawn into her and george clooney in that movie and then i'm just like but by the time you get towards the end of the film you're just like how could you break his heart and my heart at the same time watching this movie that was one of the best $2 I ever spent on Black Friday was getting <laughs> up in the air. And I'm like, I love that movie. And she's, she just, she is so charismatic and can sell a lot of different roles. Like the reason that the Conjuring films stand out amongst a lot of those horror films is like, you actually care about the Warrens and she's a big part. Like Lorraine is like the to it and then watching patrick wilson doing elvis impressions um <laughs> so you believe, you believe their love too yes. their love. and you she always feels like a tour guide in those conjuring movies like she'll go into like these small dark spaces and you just you feel like safe with her almost <laughs> it's just like it's okay lorraine's here with us we'll be uh, we'll get out of here okay right. um now Jeremy, what's a film that you feel like you could watch like every day? Um, I mean, besides Scream, um, I've also realized that 
a lot of people give the same answer for my first question <laughs> as this question too. No, I'll give a variety. Um, I mean, I, I will definitely say I could watch like any 90s like horror film. Like I know what mm. you did last summer, like Urban Legend, The Faculty, Halloween H2O, but Clueless, Hocus nice. Pocus, um, the witches <laughs> again it comes back to like horror even if it's like you're, you're totally talking about the robert zemeckis one right no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> i am not angelica houston uh ann hathaway love her but she's no she's no angelica houston <laughs> they made some choices with that one they did um not saying there were good choices, but they made some choices with that one. Yeah. What's funny is another one of the students that I met this week, it was a group of students. There was like 10 of them. One of them said Clueless. I'm like, do you all just love the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's like, are they nostalgic for the 90s that they never experienced before? Like people, like my friends and my brother who are nostalgic for the 80s, which we never lived through because I was born in 1991. I'm just like, Oh, it just keeps cycling through, doesn't it? Uh, I but love 90s music too. So yeah, I'm definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in '87, but I'm I'm a '90s baby. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Clues is so much fun. And then you also realize, my God, Paul Rudd has has aged like maybe ten days oh. since the mid '90s. Did you watch only Murders in the Building? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he looks the he looks the same. <laughs> it's just like. He looks like he's a man, like a grown man now, but almost just like maybe there's a wrinkle or two, and that's about it. And just like good for you, Paul Rudd. <laughs> just like good for you. Like right. how many years later? Now, what's a film, Jeremy, that you feel like you connect with because it relates to another interest of yours? Um, what if we don't have any other interests? No. <laughs> um well there's plenty of films about filmmaking well that's, so that's we actually let's go into that that's where i was headed um so i i did go to school for film mm -hmm. um i'm at penn state so I, I i made some films um i remember they showed us a movie called living in oblivion steve buscemi plays a director and he's on a movie set and like everything that could go wrong does. I think he's like sleeping with his star and the star is sleeping with like the actor. It's just like one thing after another. But it starts out like very like behind the scenes. You kind of see like how a movie's made. And mm -hmm. that always is very like very amusing, but also kind of educational in a way. Um, maybe Bowfinger too. <laughs> um, I mean, that's also like a making of a movie. Yeah everything goes wrong um, i love bowfinger yeah well actually basically anything with steve martin in it i'm right. gonna love so i'm with you on that yep he's fantastic and honestly if steve buscemi's in i'll certainly watch it <laughs> i did watch yeah. vacation friends too i wish i did it but i did yeah. um can't blame him though no no he showed up he did well yeah who <laughs> maybe whoever wrote it might not have no. uh, <laughs> but the Bowfinger is such a fun time so like those watching if you haven't watched that before it's so hilarious but I'll have to check out that other one that sounds interesting yeah. now what uh, so which movie character do you feel like you connect with on a personal level um if I was still a kid I'd probably say Kevin McAllister <laughs> Um, I even I remember trying to do something from Home Alone to Lost in New York and I broke my arm. So I will blame Macaulay Culkin for that. Um, I blame the movies. <laughs> I blame the movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, today, I don't know. Um, that's a great that's a great question. Um, I'd probably be like a composite of a bunch of different um hard to it is hard to capture the complexities the human condition in a movie right. character that you, know, you get to spend like two hours with oh i would say now this isn't 
I'm nothing like this character in all facets, obviously, but um, Simon from Love, Simon, um, you know, he if if nobody's seen it, it's, you know, a great, um, great coming out story. Mm -hmm. You know, I it's a movie. This is probably a cliche, but it's definitely a movie that I wish I like saw back in high school when I, you know, was closeted. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd say Simon just. Cause you know, I didn't come out until later on in life, but like college, but, um, I, I can kind of connect with him in a way, you know, you don't want to be judged. You want to be the same person. You want your parents to, you know, treat you the same. Um, I mean, Jennifer Garner and Josh Jamal is the, as his parents, they were like the most like compassionate. <laughs> yeah. cool. And like beautiful parents <laughs> you can possibly have. The, hot, the hottest parents ever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like the second he comes out, his dad apologizes to him yeah. for trying to like right. push uh women's stuff on him. And it's just yeah. like yeah. It's like I I do love the spinoff as well with uh love victor with the now this is what happens when you're roman catholic uh, <laughs> kind of thing and just like knowing being an italian american i certainly understand that it's like yeah not exactly going to be the same kind of reaction as simon's parents in love mm-hmm. simon with mm-hmm. that kind that Doesn't situation that. but oh i remember when love simon came out i loved that so much and also that soundtrack, that movie <laughs> lived uh, rent uh, free. The pictures, right? Or yeah, pictures. lived yeah. rent free in probably like half the people who saw that movie for like that whole entire months afterwards. So mm-hmm. it really worked. And yes. that's it's I it was nice seeing a mainstream film like that too, where it's like, yeah, sure, it's a very understanding parents, which not everybody gets to experience, but you know, movies have to start somewhere. Cause yep. if you go like full blown certain points, you're just like, you're going to lose that moving up point. I know that there's been a lot of discourse with like bros uh, when that came out too, where it's just like, well, it's this very, very specific, very mainstream kind of gay love story. It's just like, you know, 30 years ago, this would not even get close to being made. So take it and then it. grow with it. So, right, right. I saw bros. I was one of the 10 people that went out and actually saw it in theaters. Seeing it. Yeah. I wish it I did it. better. I, I know. Billy Eichner, I think, is really funny. He was yeah. certainly the best part of that new, the, like, the Lion King remake. Like, I agree. Like, by far. That's yeah, funny. him and uh, who was Seth, the other voice? Seth Rogen. Uh, yeah, yeah. How could I forget Seth Rogen? Yeah, I felt like <laughs> definitely um, but most humor, <laughs> most joy. Yep, absolutely. That. Now, what's a film that you love, Jeremy? That you feel like would surprise people? Um, Grease Two. <laughs> Not Grease, Grease 2. Grease 2, specifically. Again, Michelle Pfeiffer. I think I had a Michelle Pfeiffer thing. <laughs> um, it's hard not to acknowledge that Michelle Pfeiffer is amazing. Right. Um. Also, just musicals in general. Um, the Greatest Showman, La La Land, The Prom. Um, I'm also a big fan of uh like coming of age movies i mean i guess love simon kind of fits into that but then on the other side of the spectrum i also like spring breakers <laughs> a24 again um and either well, the question either, is do you want like the beach bump too um not as much <laughs> i um i liked matthew mcconaughey in that and i liked the supporting cast um was it was martin lawrence in that uh, yeah, because I feel like there was like a handful of like, oh, they're in this movie. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Mark Mar- Mar- definitely was in that movie. <laughs> right. 
something with jumping in the water with a shark or something. Yeah. That or gators, something yeah. like that. It was Florida, right? Was so probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I don't think I've I don't think I've seen Greece too. But I know Michelle Pfeiffer's in it, and I know most people don't like it. It probably has like a 10% or something on Rotten Tomatoes, yes. like, but whatever. <laughs> I love it unironically. <laughs> so I just went through and caught up completely on Guy at the Movies podcast. And if yeah. there's one thing that I learned about Joe, he loves The Greatest Showman. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... That is such a fascinating film because, like, is that just pure fun for an hour and 40 minutes? Yes. Will I listen to that soundtrack over and over and over again? Yes. Was P.T. Bar- well, real life P.T. Parnum was a horrible human being. Crap, yeah. <laughs> was Hugh Jackman's P.T. Barnum still kind of an asshole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, do you have fun watching it? Yeah. So... Don't think about it too much, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It goes down, uh, goes down very easily. Yeah. Yes. The songs will get stuck in your head for sure. I remember listening to that soundtrack. When did that come out? 2017. I think that was still on my like Spotify wrap up of 2019. Like, I think I watched it that much. <laughs> yeah. Spotify's like, again, again, <laughs> <laughs> it's, that was a very interesting December. Because, you know, everybody's like, well, Star Wars is coming out. Last Jedi. We're all going to love this. <laughs> and then, nope. yep, there are people that did love it. And then there's people who absolutely despise it and think it's the downfall of humanity. And then, and then like, Jumanji and Greatest Showman are like, <laughs> okay. Come back to the movies. Yeah. You're not going to see The Last Jedi 15 times like you saw Force Awakens. So yeah. come watch us a bunch of times. <laughs> and they certainly reap the benefits because both of them made a ridiculous amount of money. Sure. <laughs> Which I don't think they... Like, no way Jumanji would have made that much m- money in the shadow of a Star Wars film mm-hmm. if it weren't that particular Star Wars film. So Is that is Ryan Johnson? Or Jones. Yeah. 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 It's like, what what did Disney think? Like, you get a director who literally his goal is to subvert all of your expectations for a franchise that people just want exactly what they want out of it. Which is why I'm still surprised people complained about Force Awakens. It's exactly what you want out of a Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like exactly a Star Wars movie. Yeah. It's it's what you signed up for. Yeah. Exactly. And to quote Han Solo, I feel like everybody, like half the people after Last Shadow is just like, that's not how Star Wars is supposed to work. Um, that's still one of my favorite lines from Force Awakens. Like, that's not how the Force works. Uh, just grumpy. I'm, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but I... I think I gave The Force Awakens like an A. Like, and I'm, I, I love the Force you know, Awakens. I just don't give A's out like candy. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it has to earn that, it has to earn that A. But, uh, yeah, I loved, I loved The Force Awakens. Yeah. I do remember that line. Yeah. I just feel like you could go into a whole entire side yeah. conversation about fandom at this point. Right. Moral of the story, people, relax. And enjoy yourselves. Yeah. And then we'd all be much happier. <laughs> and especially on the internet. Uh, <laughs> now, Jeremy, what do you love most about movies? Um, The escape. I mean, that's probably a very, like, ordinary answer. But, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, just going, entering, like, a different world or, like, seeing a different perspective. Um, Like, as a kid, I would always read Roger Ebert reviews. And Mm -hmm. I remember he said, movies are like an, uh, an empathy machine where you can empathize with, you know, different characters that are completely unlike yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely, you know, believe that. Um, Yeah. You can definitely like learn from movies. That's probably where I get all my useless information. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I just also love just 
movie going like everyone having a different experience like it's so subjective Mm -hmm. and that's just I guess part of what makes it so fun like you know can I'll love Barbie somebody will hate Barbie (laughs) people get irrationally angry about Barbie and burn burn a bunch of dolls right yep well I'm seeing it twice opening weekend (laughs) because I just had that much fun (laughs) I also loved Oppenheimer. Did I want to sit through that for three more hours the next day? No. I, I'm i like, yeah, <laughs> I'm good for a bit. Yeah. yeah. I got my existential dread out. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that, that was one of the nicest things that weekend when they both came out. I it hadn't felt like going to a movie like that in a long time where yeah. it was just... Like, my theaters had a standing ovation for Nicole Kidman before <laughs> by Oppenheimer screening. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. like I saw this in there New are York we. <laughs> City. Yeah. I saw it in New York City at the Lincoln Square AMC oh. where they have the largest IMAX screen. Oh, okay. It's like, felt like I had to. And then yeah. I'm just seeing Killian Murphy's face like, <laughs> right on top of you yeah and but now yeah i'm just like did i walk into an internet movie forum uh where everybody's just like we love you nicole and it's just like i hate this ad i we see it way too many times this place. yeah i um so i mean i live in philadelphia well mm. Philadelphia area but uh the cl- I don't really have an AMC that's that close to me I go to the Regal and so mm-hmm. we have that annoying um movie quotes like every it's, it's like all- so cringy I would rather watch Nicole Kidman I don't know but y- you're kind of over her I guess like well, bad anyway. well, my my biggest thing is like you could have filmed like a couple yeah. and like <laughs> Put them on like a cycle right like it didn't have to and update the movies at this point like she's going to see jurassic world <laughs> and la la land and i'm just like it's just like replace it with like even replace it with fallen kingdom replace it with creed 3 it could be the same franchises just replace them have you seen that? Um, it was on Twitter a while ago. I think around the time that House of Gucci came out, but they have the Nicole Kidman ad running, and the movie that she's watching is House of Gucci, but it's um the sex scene between <laughs> like you can't unsee it. Like it, it's it's hilarious. It's you know we come here for magic. <laughs> so uh, the two my two biggest issues with the actual. Uh, the actual ad that seductive look she gives us at the end is like hard she's yeah. just like she's looking at you <laughs> and I'm just like I feel like I've been violated her eyes yeah, are like right. penetrating yeah. and then it's like AMC theaters we make movies better <laughs> and I'm like yeah. we're we're the <laughs> Where'd the American accent come from? Or where? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, you edited this. Right. You had all the time in the world. Yeah. And you actively know. chose her switching yeah. between accents. I can't get over it. It's just like every time I'm just like, where'd the hard ER come from? <laughs> just like, better. <laughs> yeah. Better. <laughs> it's just like out of nowhere. Now but it, I'll get off of my rant. Okay. Uh, I did hear they're planning on making a sequel, and I'm like, thank God. At least it's going to be a new one. <laughs> and they'll have to watch the same one. I know that. <laughs> I'm excited for that. <laughs> it's been, it could have happened like two years ago, but okay. Um, but, Jeremy, I always like to wrap this up by having my guest ask me a question. So what would you like to ask the Wasteland reviewer? Okay. Turning the tables. Um, What is a movie that you would consider so bad it's good? Like one that you enjoy, this is twofold. So there's that, and then what's a movie that's so bad it's just bad? That you hate? 
So I'm going to start with that one. And this is going to make a lot of people angry because this is usually the movie that they think is so bad. It's absolutely amazing. And it's like the greatest thing ever. I hate the room. I hate the room so much. Like, I, I swore to myself. So like, you know what? It's fun going on YouTube, looking up clips of yeah. like, oh, hi, my, oh, hi, doggy. And like all that. I could watch like that. Two minute clips. <laughs> but my two friends had me actually sit down and watch it from start to finish. Yeah. And it was one of the worst movie watching experiences I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I'm like, this is atrocious. And anybody who tries to argue that he was trying to make a comedy are full of it. He just made a bad movie. And no matter, like, after they recycled the same sex scene of him humping into her hip because he doesn't know where her vagina is, um, <laughs> it's just like after the fourth time, I think, so I do a monthly movie marathon with my friends. Uh-huh. And January was F you, it's F you, it's January bad movie marathon. And I make a ballot on a Google form. I have no influence on what movies we actually watch. I let my friends vote. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody voted for The Room. So I'm like, for my friends, I will watch this. You're a good friend. (laughs) Did I take a 10-minute break in the bathroom? Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) And that was the second one I took that day. Because I took one during Batman and Robin, too. (laughs) Because... That one's at least like colorful and like and what killed the dinosaurs, the ice age, and just like every time Arnold's on the screen, it's fun. Yeah. Every time Bruce Wayne's on the screen, it's boring as hell. Yeah. I'm just like, why? But anyway, so the room's definitely the one that is just so bad. It's just bad. Okay. Yeah. It's just bad. Okay. And and here's the thing. I generally don't get a lot of fun watching bad movies. Mm-hmm. I will admit that, okay, so this is a recent one. I gave this movie two stars out of five. All two stars of those belong to Russell Crowe for The Pope's Exorcist. Because <laughs> <laughs> this movie was not scary at all. And I'm a big baby. I was not scared once. Yeah. But my God, did Russell Crowe go, like, he's a, he is an Academy Award <laughs> winning actor, and he commits. And he okay. committed, and Father of Mort is one of my favorite characters from a movie this year. But boy, did the movie he acted in was absolutely terrible. <laughs> that, that, like, that, that Vespa was really cool, though. I, <laughs> I liked him, like, on that, you know... The, Pretty, uh, that was probably the best part. <laughs> I could watch him drive that moped, moped over best. and over and over again. And all the pictures of him with the sunglasses, riding the moped. It's just, it's a mood. It's yeah. just wonderful. Yeah. It's I fantastic. <laughs> and I laughed. He, like, Russell Crowe gave a legitimately good performance yeah. in what was a bad movie which did i expect them to set up a (laughs) marvel-esque franchise at the end of this movie hell no but will i watch them yes if russell crowe keeps acting in these i will watch more of the pope's exorcists it's just like my. i I watched that on netflix recently i'm glad that's where i watched it not Fair. <laughs> well, in the theater, I'm sitting here with my wife, and they have that scene at the end where, like, these are all the other places we need to go, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, yes, <laughs> bring it, do it. Um, I can just, I can watch Russell Crowe act as Father of Mort for days. Please make a better movie next time, though. <laughs> actually scare me that's a low bar like i mentioned before i'm a big baby i can't even watch the nun 2 trailer without just like that actually looks (laughs) i mean i don't scare easily that much anymore but like that that even got me some that jump scare yeah with the hands (laughs) just like nope 
Yeah. I'm yeah. done. Nope. <laughs> oh, one movie. They played that trailer before something that definitely was not like an adult movie. Like it was not the movie wasn't rated R or anything like that. It was probably like Ruby Gelman or whatever. <laughs> Well, I saw that at a press screen. I'm trying to remember what oh, yeah. it was, but they showed the Nun 2 trailer before a movie they shouldn't have. Oh, they played it like they played before Blue Beetle. That was like the last trailer they played before Blue Beetle. I'm like, no Dune? Yeah. Like Wonka? No, right. the Nun 2. What's the Nun 2? <laughs> In front of a movie that probably a bunch of kids came with their families yeah. to go see. Um, yeah. But one other one. I legitimately don't think it's a bad movie because you can tell they're in on the joke and the camp of it. But 95 Mortal Kombat is just, <laughs> oh man, I love that movie. It's like, objectively, it is the loosest plot you're going to find. It's a Mortal Kombat movie. All it's like, show up, have a tournament. That's it. There you go. They could even get that right. <laughs> like they couldn't even get that right in the new one. They're like, right. let's fight them before the tournament. That'll come like, next time. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Sean's take on that. He's just like, you had one job. Fight yeah. at the tournament. Fight at yeah. the tournament. And you're yeah. just like, no, we're gonna fight before the tournament and still get our asses kicked. Um, but like the night the 91, which like Paul W.S. Anderson's one of my least favorite directors. <laughs> uh, but like Boy, did he find some fun with that one. And does do the special effects look atrocious? Yes. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as Annihilation, but still right. really bad. Um, Christopher Lambert as Raiden. Odd choice, to say the least. But it's like, <laughs> I don't think so. And just like, he knew what the assignment was. And he was having fun with it. And I'm just like, like well, at least in the new one, he was Asian. Uh, yeah. At least they made that choice right. Uh, and then they replaced him with James Raymer in Annihilation, which I'm like, how could you make even worse of a decision? Yeah. I don't get this. That's terrible. Annihilation is better off never yeah. being spoke of ever again. That's another one that's so terrible. It is a horrible movie, and I wish to never watch again. I guess I could have just answered Mortal Kombat and I would have had both answers. So there you go. Yeah. Puppet Goro like, for the win. I like the room though for for your answer. Because yeah, it's um there's no way that he was trying to make a comedy. No. It was a bad soap opera. <laughs> or an art film, maybe. I don't know. But you know what? It made for a great experience watching the disaster artist. Yes. Yep. I, I want Seth Rogen commentary during the room. Like, I probably, you know what? I would watch it again if they made a commentary track with yeah. Seth Rogen <laughs> making the same kind of comments as the line director that he did. In Seth the- Rogen, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, do it. We'd have a blast. Yeah. We'd love you for it. You gave us Platonic this year. You gave us Teenage Mutant Turtles. We're we're on a roll. Keep it coming. But anyway, thank you for your question, Jeremy. Yeah, of course. But that's a wrap here on Lost in the Wasteland. I really appreciate you coming on and had a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. And please go check out all the uh, articles that Jeremy writes over at GuyAtTheMovies.com because you just did... What one did you just have come out? Swather House. <laughs> yes. I I got to interview Matthew Goodhue, the director. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, watching it... a puppet sloth just straight massacre which is sorority girls. It's just like, oh, this is the kind of movie that's just like, you know what? So ridiculous, but I had some fun with this. And the movie knew they were having fun with it, too. Uh, when a girl takes out a katana and throwing stars and starts fighting a puppet sloth in the middle of your movie, you know what you're doing. For sure. For sure. <laughs> but thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.